Hello, this is Idea Coach. He's a coach. He's from. Okay, I was actually planning on holding back this topic for a few weeks, but after seeing X Men First Class, um, this video here pretty much wrote itself. While I was watching that movie, I was just thinking, why is this taking place in the 1960s? I know it's an origin story, and, and in real time, X Men started off in like 1962 or 63, but nothing about the atmosphere or even the civilian clothes seem 1960s to me. And I was just thinking, how come they just don't make an X-Men 4? I mean, you can branch off to the other different comic book characters, like, you know, uh, Excalibur, X-Factor, X-Force, uh, Generation X, things like that. And then I started to think about the first three movies and how it all ended with the Dark Phoenix saga. And then I thought what took place after the Dark Phoenix saga in the comics. And man, that is some silly fucking shit. Jesus. For those unaware, X-Men are a ragtag group of individual mutants that collectively represent minorities, namely homosexuals. Sometimes racial minorities too. But over the nearly 50 year run, the bulk of these stories of Marvel mutants fall into about four different categories that involve them in either outer space fighting aliens, in a game show dimension where they have to be reality TV stars, battling vampire mutant dinosaurs in a prehistoric land on Earth that puts in the whole evolution idea into question, especially with the group of evolved beings. But these stories are when the creative team truly does not know what they're doing. Many times X-Men stories have them fighting people you think are mutants, but they're not or other people you wouldn't think are mutants, but they are, with the lack of a memorable human antagonist that would somehow have the power to oppress mutants, it really comes down to one group of mutants fighting another group of mutants. Sometimes Magneto's a bad guy, sometimes he's a good guy. Who knows? Picking a side has been X-Men's biggest marketing ploy. But this is not their problem. The problems with inconsistency of rosters or hero villain fence jumping plays back burner to perhaps the worst long-standing leader in fiction ever created, Scott Summers, a.k.a. Sly Cops. Leaders are very important in fiction. Sometimes a leader can make the entire team. Optimus Prime is a great example of this. He leads the Autobots. But really, without this one particular character, the Autobots really have no chance. I mean, what would a movie be like with the Autobots not having a leader at all? Oh, shit. I, I, I walked into that one. I'm sorry. I opened the wrong can of worms. Sorry about that again. Most of the time, leaders are not the most exciting characters. But they're effective. Leonardo is a great example of this. This by-the-book commander archetype is also seen in police movies and programs. Good guys fight, they get over it, strike a pose, conquer evil. Cyclops, meanwhile, is chasing a dream that no one on the X-Men team outside of Professor X is aware of. If I were to make a carbon copy of Cyclops and give it to someone else other than Marvel Comics, people would think I'm making a parody character because this guy's a joke. His strategic plan is not worth monopoly money. His control over his subordinates is non-existent. But the worst part about this guy is that like 90% of all bad X-Men comics and all the little bad things they have, 90% of that revolves around Scott Summers, from his poor leadership to the ridiculous and convoluted plot lines that X-Men have today. Let's take a look. For time purposes, I'm not going to dwell on how Scott Summers doesn't help any of his teammates at all. He never researched a way to let Rogue touch someone without hurting them, or help Angel not have a blue face. We got to focus on his lack of leadership for the time being. There's always drama in the team environment, and sometimes a boss has to put their subordinates in place. Wolverine really runs the show on the X-Men, we all know that. But couldn't Cyclops just look at the guy? Any time the unbreakable back scratcher Logan got out of hand? I mean, for real. He just has to look at people to hurt them. How hard is that? Sly Cops wore out the Japanese manga eye power gimmick four decades before the Japanese manga eye power gimmick was even popular. How the hell do you do that? 
One of my personal pet peeves with Cyclops is his direct relation to the convolutedness of X-Men as a whole by being the gateway to all those future mutants. Cyclops has a son named Cable from a distant time in the future who comes back obviously much older than his father in current time. Cable's experience of the dark future known as the Age of Apocalypse might be vital information today. Does Cyclops' daughter ask his son about the possible doom that awaits? Not at all. He doesn't even try to have a relationship with his son Cable. Cyclops is mad enough to fuck old white bitch Goblin Queen, but not mad enough to spend time with this kid. Cyclops also has a grandson, the evil Genesis, and a granddaughter, another phoenix or something. But there's so little development with these two that it's redundant to make a joke of the characters. Let's see how long that 20-something looking child hope lasts, asshole. Marvel just won't quit on trying to convince people that Cyclops is to be considered more important than what he really is. That somehow the future of all mutants are traced back to the man that couldn't lead the Salvation Army. Fuckers. We have yet another mutant from the future. I'm getting tired of this too. This is Bishop Eddie Long. He says the X-Men will betray the team and lead to impending doom for all. Another evil mutant comes from the future with him. His name's Fitzroy. Wouldn't it be a good idea to cross-reference the future mutants? Or at least make your girlfriend run periodic mental scans on the team to see if there's any imposters or mind control going on. Cyclops does it none of this. This is where Cyclops' character gets damn near readable. In effort to pretend that Wolverine is not Slycops' worst enemy, they became one of the silliest characters of all time, Mr. Sinister. Bad name, bad character design, bad motivation, bad weakness power paradigm. We all know that X-Men are representatives of homosexuals, and that's okay. But this character puts a pedophile element to X-Men. The story of Mr. Sinister is that he, you know, a long time ago, adopted Scott Summers as a child and needed his DNA for something. Now, you would think it would be actually quite simple to get a child's DNA, you take them to a medical facility, they, you know, extract some blood, and boom, you got DNA. No, Mr. Sinister needs Scott Summers' ejaculate. We got a lot of men that just like to hunt down young boys and put their dick in their ass holding in their mouth. We got a lot of grown men that don't want nobody old of their age. Even these old ass men hop around here on these sticks with snuff in their mouth and their teeth out. And they got a big wad over here in their damn jaw full of tobacco. Man, it will just fulfill all their dreams. If they get one of them young boys around the corner, they'll pull that wad out so quick they act like they hand bent up and feeble and shit and they all got arthritis and they can't hardly walk. Let one of them young dicks come around the corner. They're here. But this is it. The, the worst part, and, and the absolute worst part of Slycops' character and his leadership is the fact that they have all these splinter, ripple effect X-Men teams going on. Um, Generation X, X-Men uh, Gold, X-Men Blue, X-Factor, too many of them. I'm not going to name all of them right now. Here's the thing. He lost his leadership of the X-Men back in the 90s, back in the peak X-Men boom, to Storm. He lost it to fucking Halle Berry. He lost it to Hurricane Chris talking about the girl in Swordfish. Play the song. This is so great. The comic movie quotable before the Heath Ledger Joker. We witness the almighty toad stop around Wolverine and give Cyclops a tongue lash. Okay, okay, that sounds gay, but, but bear with me here. This is so sweet. Do you know what happens to a jackass that listens to Hurricane Chris when it's struck by lightning? Um, 
Same thing that happens to everything else? Hey, baby! Okay, you have to understand that the examples I've given you are not alternative universes or time pieces or what F stories. All the things I've mentioned are stories and characters that do have or had years and years of impact and implication on one or more X-Men teams. I know that writers sometimes like to write certain characters as being strong at the expense of other characters being weak, like Frank Miller's Batman in the 80s, which made him very popular by making Superman look stupid and weak. But this doesn't apply here for Cyclops. For Cyclops, he holds the entire franchise down with how bad he is. I mean, what if the new movie is called X-Men New Class? Parts of those future fuckers or clone assholes or that prehistoric silliness or those outer space, just, just mind-blowing dumb stories would have to take place now in these new movies. He literally forced the X-Men to go back 50 years. Unbelievable. Okay, guys, that's pretty much about it for comic book related idea code sheets topics going on between now and the DC Universe reboot happening in September. I'm going to wait until I actually read those comics before I comment on them. There's been a lot of talk about how stupid it is, and I do agree with that, but maybe they're doing things for the best. I don't know. Other than that, guys, take care. Oh, I got my eye on you. You thought you was going to watch a whole video about Cyclops and not have me do a one-eye joke? Wait, oh, 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 oh shit. I, I, I read on the internet that anytime you see one eye in a, in a movie or something like that, it represents Satan. Oh, fuck. Oh, man, is it too late now? Oh, uh, wait, wait. I have two eyes. I, I have two eyes. Okay, okay. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Oh my God, did I just sell my soul to Satan to make this X-Men video? Fuck you, Cyclops. God damn it.